sorry there was some technical glitch so i have to uh, do some settings changes great so to continue uh, we are starting with the patents patents is the most important type of uh, ipr which we are going to see and uh, during the other sessions in this particular uh, workshop we are going to see in detail about what the patents are how and why it is mandatorily required to get a patent registration for the inventions or in other words the innovations so patent is completely different than any of the ipr types that we have seen till now and most importantly patent basically helps you to secure your rights uh, for more number of years as compared to the uh, other types of ipr and this enforceability or the protection that you get for the patents is the strongest type of uh, you know legal protection that you can get so let's go into details of it now Patent basically is a exclusive right. Like I told you, IPR is all about the rights that are given to an individual for the creation of uh, his, uh, you know, creation through his mind or creation of his mind. And this patent is a set of exclusive rights which are granted by a government to an inventor for a fixed period of time in exchange of technological disclosure of its secrecy. Defin definition of these patents may sound a bit complex, but let me try to explain it in a very simple manner. So let us imagine that some idea or some concept has come to your mind and this concept has come to your mind by seeing some of the problems that are available in the existing technology, existing product, existing services or existing methodology. These problems can be anything, but they should have a real time application in your, uh, you know, in your day to day life. So if you come up with any such concept which tries to solve such problem in the market and if they are related to a technology or if there is a requirement of a technology to solve such problems, then this is the eligible subject matter for patent. Patent in, uh, let us say in uh, other jurisdictions, for example, United States, it is referred to as utility patent as well. The term utility indicates it has some application or associated applicability to it. So, like I said, uh, the second point on the slide, you can see that these inventions, the term invention is referred here intentionally because inventions are always associated with something which was not available in the past, not available in the art, and they have some technological touch base to it. So, these inventions may be related to a technological product or a process. Let's take a very simple example. Now, uh, let us assume that uh, I want to travel from one location to other location. Let's consider from Maharashtra to, uh, let us say, Chennai. Okay. Now, uh, in very old days, the, the only possible solution was that I have to either take a train or I have to either go by a bus or I have to, I have to take a cab, uh, taxi for that matter, or my own vehicle to travel from Maharashtra or any, any place from Maharashtra, say, for example, Mumbai to Chennai. Now, somebody or some person who was intellect in nature and has technological background, he thought that there are some other solutions or there are some possible solutions to this particular problem. What was the problem actually? The problem was that the time taken for commute from one place to other place, that is from Mumbai to Chennai, was substantially large, substantially huge. Second problem, it was too cumbersome for a user to travel through a bus for a, such a long distance of, you know, in nature. Thus, these people came up with an example. For example, let us say a person may come up with an invention of a, um, a helicopter or an aeroplane or a ship, right? Or a cruise control for that matter. So these are all examples which tries to solve the problem of time required for commute. Second is the cumbersome nature of the commute that is caused because of the conventional routes. And thus this person may, be eligible to file a patent for his invention or his technology whatever he has come up with that may be a helicopter that may be an aeroplane that may be a jet that may be a, a cruise that may be a ship or anything that will try to solve these problems the problem specifically i told were the exemplary in nature for example the time required is more uh, as compared to the uh, the the you know uh, aeroplane or flight or jet and other stuff whereas it is not even cumbersome in nature. Just imagine the train takes around 14 hours or 15 hours of time to reach from Mumbai to Chennai, whereas the aeroplane takes hardly one, one and a half hour or two hour maximum to reach from Mumbai to Chennai. So there can be so much of advantages of saving this particular time. Thus, this is the eligible subject matter for getting a patent. So what I'm trying to convey through this example is that 
any invention or any particular solution which has a technological base to it and it tries to solve a technological problem that is available in the existing product, existing uh, services or any existing literature. This is all possible to get a patent right for and this is an eligible subject matter of filing a patent as a type of IPR. Let me go in a simpler example. Let us say in very ancient time, uh, there were no calculators that were available. So just imagine how cumbersome it would be for a person to, uh, to make the calculation, the complex calculation, for example, square root of x, y, z, p, q, r, something, something, which is a huge number. For example, multiplication of so many uh, huge numbers, how it was cumbersome to them in nature in the ancient time. So to solve this problem, some person came with a solution of an electronic computer or electronic calculator. So this calculator made the life of a person to do any kind of calculation in an easier way. Thus the life was made easier. This is again, a person is trying to solve a problem which is a real time problem and then he is coming up with a solution. Let's take a very real time scenario. For example, uh, in old days or in ancient time, uh, people used to, you know, to crush uh, or to grind a particular food material, for example, tomatoes or onion, people used to use that particular, uh, you know, uh, the old, uh, uh, you know, uh, some kind of uh, instrument, which they have to, uh, you know, uh, hit it hard through a particular component, uh, steel or iron uh, rod, and then they have to crush that particular thing. By seeing this problem, which was available in the real time in household stuff, some person came with an example or with a solution of a mixer, right? Mixer or a grinder. So these are all real time examples which are eligible to get a patent filed for and to get a protection in IPR called as patent. I told you that the patent is the most complex and most, uh, let us say, uh, enforceable or stronger type of IPR in nature. And the best part of this particular right is that it is eligible to you for next 20 years from the date you have filed the patent application for. Let's take a very simple example again. We use bicycle in our day to day life. If anybody have noted that these bicycles are of various types and various materials. For example, the, way, the bicycle that we use at our home is a simpler version of a bicycle. Whereas the bicycles that are used by the athletes or the sport uh, people, that is more complex in nature. It has so many gears, it has so many, you know, different type of material that is being used for wheels and for the whole body, a chassis is what you call it as. And even the, uh, the, the dynamics of that uh, bicycle of an athlete is completely different than what we have at home. Or for example, what your kid use at home. So these are all inventions in a particular product called as bicycle. Let's take an example. What this patent can be of? I'm just giving an example here. Let us assume that there were conventional bicycles that were available. And the only problem that was noted was that the tire of this particular bicycle was only uh, useful to drive on a uh, tar road or let us say on a, uh, on a tile. Now this was a problem because the people from village area or people from uh, you know uh, the areas where they have to use the way use the bicycle uh, in sand or in desert they were not allowed or they were not uh, it was not possible for them to use the bicycle in those areas. Thus somebody came what came up with an invention about a tire which is called as all terrain tire. This tire is not only applicable to be used on tiles and tar road but it can also be used. Uh, maybe for example in a, uh, in a in a sand or in a desert or for that matter even uh, on a beaches where the where the sand actually is uh, moist in nature and a watery kind of surface is applicable there so this is also an example of an invention similarly let us take another example what was the problem that a person may find in a conventional way a conventional bicycle one was that the seat of that particular bicycle was huge because of which uh, it was not possible for a, a person to comfortably sit on that particular bicycle and drive the uh, bicycle forward or pedal the bicycle. Someone came with, with a design or with a particular shape of this particular seat, which enabled the person to, uh, uh, to easily pedal the bicycle and still achieve the better result as compared to this particular uh, conventional seat. Another example is that if you see that there is a black rod between the seat and the chassis, white color chassis that of a vehicle, of a bicycle. Just imagine if in very old days, it was not possible to move or to, you know, increase the height of that particular seat in the bicycle. 
this was a real time problem that was faced by somebody and in order to solve that problem and this these people came up with a solution of an extendable or for example uh, height adjustment mechanism in the seat of the bicycle just imagine if these inventions or if these creations have not come in somebody's mind we were still we would be still facing the problem of you know back ache and neck ache and other uh, related activities which were not you know uh, comfortable for a person to drive or to pedal this particular bicycle so what i'm trying to convey through this example is that inventions patents they are all related to a problem that you see in a real time scenario the problem which was hypothetical in nature or the problem which is hypothetical in nature and we are we are providing a hypothetical solution to it such inventions are not patent eligible let's take an example of a hypothetical invention so for example i'm sure you must be aware of uh, one of the greatest scientists proposed that when you travel from earth to space you have to travel through a medium called as ether now this ether what we have learned in physics is an imaginary medium so there is no proof of existence of this ether till date but still the scientist the greatest scientist uh, proposed that there is a presence of a medium called as ether now just imagine ether whose existence is not at all known or it is not established if we come up with an invention to utilize ether in a vehicle of uh, as a fuel and then we use this particular fuel to travel just a 1 ml of ether it is used to commute for a 1000 kilometers do you really feel it is uh, realistic in nature the answer to this is no firstly why because ether in itself is not established or it is proved that it exist second usage of that ether which is not existable in nature we are trying to use or propose a engine for that ether which helps you to drive your vehicle hypothetical second proof you are giving in your patent application a proof that 1 ml of ether can uh, you know can uh, drive your vehicle to 1000 kilometers which is again hypothetical in nature such inventions are straight forward rejected by the patent office and hence i am asserting on the term real time examples which are implementable in nature they cannot be hypothetical in nature right i hope this particular concept is clear to you moving on trade secret it is one of the best type of ipr which actually helps you to protect any particular secret associated with your business or a product let me try to explain it with an example as you can see on the screen coca cola is a best example for such kind of trade secrets anybody of us are aware of what are the constituents or what are the ingredients and their respective percentages while making or manufacturing or uh, you know implementing this particular coca cola drink obviously no nobody knows in fact 99% of the people who consume this coca cola drink they are not aware whether they are drinking pesticide whether they are, they are drinking acid or whether they are drinking any any kind of uh, you know um, alcoholic beverage or or whether it is a kind of uh, you know uh, venomous kind of uh, fluid nobody is aware of it such secrets which are kept hidden from public or in other words such secrets which are kept hidden from the competitors so that your business is not hampered by revelation of this particular secrets are called as trade secrets coca cola is one of the examples the another example is that uh, uh, let us say kfc the masala of the kfc the chicken uh, products that you get in kfc they are coated with some uh, unique kind of masala we are not aware or anybody of us who who consumes this particular chicken in kfc outlets we are not aware what masala or what particular uh, materials or ingredients are used to manufacture or come up with such kind of masalas we are not even sure whether that is edible in nature or not just imagine why this is required just imagine that somebody comes to know about uh, ingredients of the masala of the kfc what will happen very 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 obvious question what will happen he will he will not require a need of kfc at all he can even cook at home with the ingredients that are known to him in fact if required he can even sell it to the other people with the same ingredients what kfc was using because he came to know about the ingredients and the percentage of the ingredients used to bring that masala right thus the masalas which actually the kfc has brought into it is kept hidden from the public or to competitor in nature because mainly because if such masalas come into known or you know knowledge of a person in the industry or the competitor it is going to hamper the business of this masala 
let's take example of how if trade secret is known how it will hamper the business i am sure you all must be aware of the product called maggi right everybody eats maggi at home almost everybody i believe right just imagine couple of days couple of years back there was uh, an uh, a case which was filed against nestle because maggi is being produced by nestle company that this masala of maggi includes lead tb am i right you must have already read it in the news you know what happened ultimately of that case nothing happened what court decided was that there was no presence of lead in the masala of maggi and thus it was it is still in the existence in the market there was no stoppage of the product but you know in this process what happened was like court forced maggi to reveal the ingredients of this particular masala of maggi which was not known earlier it was always called a secret masala or maggi masala what happened because of that is like in the next day when the when the configuration or let us say ingredients were disclosed to the court or to the public uh, a competitor yy maggi came into picture and they started selling manufacturing and with the same almost same contents of maggi in the market what was the end result of all this activity the end result was that maggi was hampered the, the revenue of maggi was so hampered that if i'm not wrong and if i'm not mistaken uh, almost 20 to 30% of their total revenue was hampered because of this particular issue this is the importance of trade secret now you will say how, what why it is important these are all big companies there are big corporates why it will be important for us in our day to day life trust me it is all relevant in nature and everything has a importance to it for example when you join any company or when you join any institution or college for that matter you are expected to sign one document it's called as non disclosure document or confidentiality agreement in other words what are these agreements the term itself indicates confidentiality means it should not be disclosed to anybody non disclosure agreement means what it, it should not be disclosed to anybody these are all examples of trade secrets what by signing these particular agreements what the college or the company expects is that whatever information or knowledge that you gain which is proprietary to that particular institution should not be disclosed to anybody outside this institution when you are working in this institution and even after or even you know after couple of years you leave the institution so these are agreements are basically covering the trade secret related clauses in india there is no trade trade secret related law but in india these trade secrets are covered indirectly in the form of contracts and agreements these are all the part of commercial laws or rather contracts act right this is clear to you great perfect another type of exemplary type of uh, in info you know intellectual property right is geographical indications what this geographical indication means is like as i am keeping on telling to you that you need to just break the term to understand the meaning of it geographical indication an indication which gives you a association of a geography or for example an indication which is associated with a geography is nothing but a geographical indication can anybody guess what are the examples of this let me tell you very simple kolhapuri chappal right uh, then what you have you have uh, uh, what are the other examples can anybody tell me sure absolutely right so these are all examples for example uh, another one type of example here i have just put it to forward to you is like nagpur nagpur oranges nagpur santra right then another example is the peda which you see at the bottom of the slide it's called as dharwad ka peda so a peda which is actually being manufactured and sold and has a origin of dharwad it is called as dharwad ka peda nagpur oranges the oranges which are being you know cultivated in nagpur region they are called as they are referred to as nagpur oranges whereas the chappals on the left hand side that you see if they are manufactured or you know brought into existence in kolhapur with a with a typical fashion of uh, uh, you know uh, indicating it's a kolhapur uh, ancestral chappal it is called as kolhapuri chappal let's go into bit detail of it as i told you any indication which is associated with a geography is called is categorized under geographical indication now this geographical indications are always associated with the geographical location or in other words its origin its origin place right 
So whenever a name is taken along with the origin, it is always referred to a geographical indication. The another example of uh, uh, Hyder, uh, not Hyderabad biryani, but um, Jaipur ka shawl, right? Darjeeling tea. So these are all what? These are all associated with the origin of the product. So any product, any particular tea which is Darj, which is from, which is has origin, which comes from Darjeeling, are referred to as Darjeeling tea, right? So these have a unique characteristic, they have a unique feature in itself and thus it helps actually to identify a person that this product is genuine in nature and it has the qualities of that particular origin of that particular geographical location. Am I right? Great. So now, uh, like I told you, the second line clearly indicates that it helps you to identify the product and the origin origination of that particular project where it is originating from. And in other ways, it also popularizes the name of that particular origin or the geographical location from which it is cultivated or brought into existence. In short, it is a clear link between the product and the place of origin. Examples we discussed, right? You may be, you may be using some of the products which are in your daily life, which are actually GI or geographical indication, which gives you knowledge about the origin of the product. But you may, you may not be aware that it is a type of IPR and specifically a geographical indication type of IPR, right? So this is what is the importance we and that is the reason I'm stressing on the fact that we use the IPR almost all types of IPR in our daily life, but we are not aware that this falls into the category of intellectual property, right? And specifically the categories of the intellectual property, right? right? Moving on, another type of IPR is called is referred to as plant variety protection. In other words, this is also referred to as farmers or breeders, right? Now, as the name indicates, this is all associated with the farmer or it is all associated with the plants in nature, right? So this is a protection given to a plant or a variety of plant that if some particular person comes up with a new breed or new variety of a plant. I have tried to show you with an example to make it further clear. On the left hand side, you see it's called as Daniela tomato, which is actually I think it's a Malaysian or Thailand product. So these tomatoes were already available in the market. The best part of these tomatoes were they, they had a long shelf life. If I'm not wrong, for example, it, it can stay as with their original characteristics for 15 to 20 days without refrigeration or without frozen in nature, right? So this has a sustainability in nature. But some people did an experiment on this particular plant and came up with an upgraded variety of tomato. Now they refer to as a Desera tomato. Right. So this is again, uh, we call it as Dasera, they call it as Ducera uh, tomato in Thailand. So basically they, they came up with a similar kind of tomato, Daniela tomato, but upgraded or let us say advanced in nature and the shelf life of that particular fruit was further extended as well as the shape of those tomato was uniform in nature. You can see the difference on the left hand side. You see some of the some of the tomatoes are white in color. Some of them are small. Some of them are red in color. Some of them are faint red in color. Whereas if you'll see on the right hand side, that is the advanced breed. You see all those tomatoes are either like bigger in size. They are of same color, same consistency and they have a long shelf life. So any such modification which give you a very different yield as compared to the conventional known fruit or uh, uh, you know, vegetable, they are all referred to or categorized under plant variety protection. I generally give a very, uh, you know, very simple example to everybody. Uh, you must have seen a rose, rose flower, right? These rose flowers are of different color. For example, yellow, white, red, purple for that matter. But have you seen a black color rose? You may have recently seen. Now, why this black color rose came into picture was because some person tried to do an, some experiment on the existing rose flower plants, tried to change the specific DNA or specific, uh, let us say, chromosome or DNA in other words, uh, of this particular conventional rose plant and came up with a new color plant, which is black in nature, right? So the rose nowadays or recently, you'll be seeing a couple of uh, places where you get this uh, black rose, which is very costlier in nature as compared to the conventional rose. So this is what is the importance of plant variety protection and that is the reason why it is referred to as farmers or breeders, right? This is all associated with the farming and all the, let us say, particular uh, plants or, uh, you know, any kind of, uh, you know, any particular modification that is done to them, right? This also encourages the development and cultivation of new variety of plants. 
the another best example which we do which we use in daily life is like you you may have seen in the market when you go and shop a rice there are different varieties of rice that you get you know right what are what are the different varieties of rice that you get in the market right one i am aware of is a kolam kolam right rice right so these are these are based on the variety these are based on the specific characteristics and these are specifically based on sustainability they all they, they have all different smell in nature you know they have different smell the rice has smell so these are all different so you decide which is costlier which is not costlier all based on the particular smell of that particular rice the texture of that particular rice and all those stuff so this is the importance of plant variety protection so i hope it is pretty much clear to you this why this plant variety protection is really important in nature right here i have come up with an example uh, particular product which is uh, I, I don't want to reveal the name but let us assume that it is coca cola so this particular product have multiple types of ipr all the types of ipr that we discussed actually are applicable in this particular product before going into this let us quickly quickly revise what all types and why and how they are differentiated in from each other first example is a copyright what is covered in the copyright first the artistic nature literary in nature right then what dramatic in nature cinematography these are all the examples of the copyright so any particular concept or any particular uh, let us say uh, creation that is artistic literary or dramatic in nature are categorized under copyright trademark as it indicates a mark which represents your trade so any particular mark which associates a product or which associates to a company is referred to as a trademark third is a industrial design as the name indicates a design which is actually applicable for a product and which helps this product to be distinguished from any other existing product without its usage or without act without actually touching it so this is called as design the best example here is the bisleri bottle the aquafina bottle and the kindle bottle Layouts. This is basically design or the chips that you get in the market. Patents. I told you it is all about the technology and the invention part of it, which solves a particular problem and then provides a particular solution to it. Trade secrets. The secrets which are associated with a trade and which, if disclosed to a competitor, may hamper the revenue of your business is called a trade secret. Geographical indication. We just saw an indication which is associated with the geography. The example of this is Nagpur orange. Kolapuri chappal, Darwar peda, Jaipuri shawl, Kanjivaram silk and all those stuff. Plant variety protection, we just saw that this is basically a, a breeder's right which helps you to protect uh, a different variety of plant which is superior in nature and which produces a result or a product which is again further superior in nature than the conventional one. Let's come back to this example. I have tried to show that where and all what different types or different parts of this particular bottle there are different iprs for example let's start from the right hand side the the cap of this bottle it is called as tamper resistant bottle so this is a technology and it tries to solve some problem what what would be the problem according to you that this particular technology solve as the name indicates tamper resistant cap. which means if this cap is opened or it is dislocated once from this bottle it cannot be fixed again tamper means it cannot be altered or it cannot be modified it has to change from its original shape and it cannot be reused and thus this type of bottle or this type of cap for this bottle is patented by this particular company coca cola or the product coca cola right trademark the name of this particular bottle which is written always uh, you know in a very specific format uh, is called as uh, trademark because this indicates or this signifies that this particular product belongs to a particular brand called as coca cola what would be the trade secret in this we just saw it in an example the ingredients or the material that are used to uh, manufacture this particular drink or this liquid is called as trade secret right trade dress or a design patent design patent like i told you it is about a shape of the bottle and even the color combination of this particular uh, you know bottle which identifies it it as a product and it is aesthetic in nature which cannot be you know it doesn't have to be touched or felt or you know uh, used for identifying it as a different it is also categorized under design patent the shape of the bottle yeah 
copyright what can be a copyright in this copyright can be on the contents written uh, on this particular bottle or on the basically the 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 page that is uh, pasted on the bottle which gives the information about the price and how much liter it is and what all what all uh, expiry dates and other stuff which is written so all these are examples of copyright right now moving on here it is just a glimpse for you to understand like all the different types of ipr that we just discussed under what act or under what law are they protected in india this is specifically related to india every country has its own law its own act and based on which they try to protect their respective ipr for example in india it is referred to as the patents act 1970 as the name indicate the patent act actually is uh, directed towards giving a protection for the matters which are related to patent or the inventions absolutely the second example of the uh, act which is used in india is for the protection of a trademark it is referred to as the name of the act is indian trademark act 1999 the 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 year which is mentioned at the bottom they are basically the year on which the proposal or the existence of this act came into picture so you can see the patents in india are available from 1970 before that there were no patents filed in india similarly trademark which were Uh, filed uh, after 99 were given the identification as trademark before that there were no trademarks in the you know in india similarly copyright copyrights act 1957 so copyright if you'll see it is the most oldest form of the ipr that was existent that was existing in nature even before the other type of iprs came into existence 1957 design act 2000 right so basically this design act is very recent one as compared to the any other type of ipr geographical indications of good uh, goods registration and protection act 1999 this is all associated with the gi that is geographical indication other type of uh, kind of uh, ipr uh, which we saw was a breeders farmers right that that we discussed builders right what we call it as and in other words it's called as plant variety protection the name of this act or the law is called as protection of plant varieties and farmers right act 2001 this was brought into market in 2001 the last uh, is about the ic layouts and design the act is referred to as semi semiconductor integrated circuits layout design act 2000 so you may have noted that there are different acts for each of these different types of ipr that we just saw which also indicate that there are different laws for each of these particular type of ipr which further indicates that each particular ipr is given a special privilege by the law right so this is what is the importance of this particular slide that i wanted to put forward every particular ipr has a separate particular act for it it is not like any other act for example if you refer to any of the ipcs these are all criminal acts so all these acts which are applicable in this particular thing there is only single type of example act i'm just giving an example there is a single act or let us say law for all the ipc in the indian penal code there is a single particular document which includes all these particular laws whereas ipr is the field which is vast in nature and it has multiple types and thus the acts and the law is also separated moving on a very basic question that come into anybody's mind especially when they are not from an ipr domain or may not have or may have a limited knowledge of the ipr is that how to choose which type of ipr is eligible for my subject matter or my creation of mind let's take an example that we want to discuss we'll go into details of each and everything everybody who is actually currently in this session uses a mobile phone right have we thought that this mobile phone may have so many types of ipr all the types of ipr that are surrounded to this particular phone are basically the eligible type of ipr that are applicable for this particular phone let's take an example okay trade secret what can be a trade secret for this particular thing can anybody suggest can anybody think about it yes it may be a trade secret is basically like we discussed it can be an information which you do not want your competitors to disclose to be disclosed to thus any 
एक स्पेसिफिक टाइप ऑफ कोड और एनी स्पेसिफिक टाइप ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम दैट इज बीइंग इंस्टॉल्ड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मशीन और मोबाइल फोन दे डू नॉट डिस्क्लोज इट टू एनी बडी लाइक वॉट इज द कोडिंग बिहाइंड इट वी ऑल नो दैट इट इज एंड्रॉइड फोन इट इज एन यू नो इट यूज सम मैक ओ एस ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम बट वी वी आर नॉट डिस्कलोज विद द कोड रिटर्न फॉर ईच ऑफ दिस ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम राइट वी जस्ट गेट अ सिंपल ई एक्स सी फाइल टू एग्जीक्यूट और टू इंस्टॉल we just install it blindly but we are not aware what coding is running behind it right am, am i correct none of us would be aware like how may how so ever expensive phone it may be it may be a 1 lakh phone apple or it may be um, uh, you know simple 5000 rupees samsung phone nobody is aware what kind of operating system or specific coding of the operating system that is used we are just aware the name of the operating system for example android some version then mac os some version then you have uh, any other you know windows uh, os and any other version but we are not aware the coding behind it that is called as trade secret the reason of keeping it trade secret because if just imagine if apple discloses the coding of mac os to anybody uh, who who is aware of android or who is aware of such coding he will easily try to build up his own operating system based on the same code that is being uh, put forward thus it is not disclosed easily to anybody and thus it is categorized under the trade secret semiconductor ic layouts i gave you a very simple example in the when we discussed about the uh, semiconductor uh, semiconductor ic layouts and all stuff what was that example is that whenever you open any electronic device whenever you open any electronic um, machine you will see that basically your internal circuitry has some black color chips if you recall i just told you this particular chip you see on the top this chip is nothing but an ic layout and you see that though i have shown in this picture it's a very larger size chip you can even see it in mm the size in millimeters these chips are available in the market and all these chips are basically used to operate your phone in a dedicated function i told you the example that whenever you want to unlock your phone you have to just either press a fingerprint uh, scanner on the thing uh, you know on the phone or you have to press an unlock key which is placed on the right or left hand side of this particular mobile phone how will a mobile phone which is actually a machine and dumb in nature how will it understand that upon pressing this particular button there has to be performed a activity why it doesn't happen that when we place a place a press a unlock button the volume of the uh, mobile phone decreases it never happens the main reason of this not happening is because these chips which are installed in the uh, mobile phone they are configured with a dedicated function or dedicated functionality which helps them to identify when a when a particular button on on this particular device is touched what activity it has to do and thus whenever you press an unlock button automatically a phone gets unlocked and no other activity happens similarly it goes for the other application or other usage also right so this was the example of a uh, ic layout which was used in the uh, mobile phone on the right hand side you will see there is a copyright protection copyright can be on what copyright can be on the user interfaces which are being seen on this particular phone let's take a simple example whenever you switch on your phone when it is in powered off mode you would see that a name of this particular mobile phone appears in the screen first no no phone will start directly and you can just start operation as soon as you press the uh, restart button no so these are all examples of a copyright so what will happen is right basically the copyright will help you to give a specific uh, artistic literary or you know cinematographic nature art or literature in your phone what are the other examples other examples are uh, when you go into settings you see that there is a option of uh, status Uh, or let us say device update whenever you click on that you see lot of information written over that the arrangement of that information which is displayed on your screen which is never distorted in nature by the way the same website that you see on the uh, laptop the same website when you put it on the mobile phone it shows you a proper display intacted in this particular display and it does not get distort even if the same website is being used or accessed on a mobile phone this is all based on the software code which is written in the operating system and which is again uh, which is again categorized under the literary work of this particular copyright right the code that may be written in java that may be written in c sharp that may be written in you know any other uh, coding language that is 
specific to a coder or specific in nature to a coder like which loops for example for loop if loop any other loop has to be used and at what location along with in line with the uh, functioning of this particular thing or the algorithm of this particular uh, code thus this particular coding is categorized under the copyright right another example of uh, the type of ipr that is applicable is the design i would like to just um, uh, take a bit uh, pause here and explain you uh, design in terms of mobile phone is really important why because you must have heard an apple company suing samsung for millions and billions of dollars in united states whereas a same company samsung suing apple in other jurisdiction for millions and billions of dollars this is all happening because the design protection was taken by each of these companies for their product and some other company was trying to copy it so for example in united states uh, samsung was trying to copy the apple phone so if you'll see the phone which is shown it's a uh, exemplary uh, iphone that i have tried to show here and you see there is a small circle at the uh, bottom part basically it is used to unlock and lock uh, you know uh, apple phones samsung tried to copy it the circular uh, button in nature apple uh, samsung tried to copy it and thus apple sued samsung for the positioning and the shape of this particular button in united states for millions and billions of dollars you can't imagine what would be the fees for that and samsung has to pay because they at one point of time they established that they copied it right similarly in european jurisdiction apple tried to copy the uh, positioning of the volume button on the samsung phones you may be aware that samsung phones have a unique positioning and the shape of this particular buttons uh, for increase or decrease of a volume either they are placed on the left hand side or on the right hand side of this particular body of the phone many of us may be using the samsung uh, phone at the moment and you would see that uh, the positioning of the uh, buttons that is volume increase and decrease is uh, specific in nature and they are always placed on the left or right of the body whereas apple phone tried to copy that the positioning of that button or in other words apple tried to copy the uh, the specific corner of this particular device you know the corner has a specific shape in nature of this particular samsung phone and samsung thus tried to saw uh, tried to uh, you know try to stop apple from doing that and if they did not stop which they did not stop by the way samsung sued apple for millions of dollars in european jurisdictions right this is the power of design protection trademark as i told you trademark is always associated with the uh, with the with the brand or with the product which it is originated from a company thus the name of the phone which is and how it is written on the back or front of the uh, product is protected under uh, the trademark similarly the logo of the company you may have seen the apple phones there is always that apple sign on the back of the phone they do even though they don't write the name apple uh, at the bottom of the logo but still you would see that uh, they have actually uh, tried to put the logo in a clearer manner to identify that this product belongs to apple company right now any mark can be provided on the uh, phones which actually helps a person or a buyer or a user to identify that this particular phone belongs to a particular company or this logo belongs to a particular company the last and most important type of ipr that is eligible for mobile phones is that uh, patent patent basically can be of two types we just discussed it can be product it can be a process product is like when a product in itself is unique in nature that is distinguishable from others and mainly it tries to solve some particular problem the product can be filed as a patent and the, and you can get a product patent for it in other in other uh, in contrast to this process patent is a patent which is actually given or allocated to a process which is being followed by a particular phone to perform a particular function right so thus you would appreciate that a product can have multiple types of ipr and specifically with regards to patent it can be of two types it can be a product as well as a process right so this is what is the slide depicting that a particular product can have multiple types of ipr and you can file a different types of ipr for this particular single product right moving on this is another example which actually shows that there can be a single product with multiple uh, iprs in nature utility patent like i told you it is filed for a tamper resistant cap design of this particular coca cola bottle right 
whereas trademark is basically for the name that is written on this particular bottle coca cola diet coke and all those stuff so this helps you to identify that this product belongs to any you know to a origin original company and not to a particular uh, you know non branded or any fake company uh, this reminds me to share with you a very good example you must have seen parleyji biscuit right there is a wrapper of parleyji that is being uh, sold in the market and from some many many years but if you go in a rural area village area you will see that this parleyji the name becomes parley e so basically it's parley e is not a product of a parleyji or a parley company basically these people or the uh, people who wants to hamper the business of parley or they want to generate revenue using the existing names of parleyji they try to copy the aesthetics of this particular cover they put in their own product inside it and they just try to wrap and disguise the users to show that this is nothing but a parleyji but if you'll see there is a very slight difference uh, in the name parleyji is converted into parley now the problem is that the people who are staying in village they may not be aware of uh, you know the specific difference or the minor difference and thus they buy they eventually buy the product and then ultimately parleyji is at a loss this is the importance of a trademark they just see the colors for example there is another example sticker and sneaker right you see sneaker this is a very recently branded product in the market for you know energy bar what we refer to as it's a chocolate basically and in a very reputed mall you see that the sneaker has a name written as sticker so ultimately what is happening is like the sticker is a is a fraud company which actually tries to copy the sneaker as a original product they just try to give the exact combination of letters terms color combination of the envelope or the wrapper around that chocolate and inside the product is not a original product it's a fake product right thus it is very important for people to be aware of such kind of fraud that is going on in the market right this is a fraudulent practice so thus this trademark coming back to this particular slide this trademark is really important and thus whenever a product whenever your product or whenever any person comes to you for advice for a trademark you need to clearly tell him what is the importance of a trademark why it is important in nature and you can show them with the examples like this is what happens in the market today copyright what can be a copyright the way this coca cola is written it is an art it is an art of somebody so this can be protected under copyright now just there is a thin line of difference just to make you understand trademark is the name per se so it does not cover how artistic in nature or how color combination of this particular name is written whereas copyright will cover only the artistic work in nature so the shape and the curves of this particular bottle uh, sorry the name uh, coca cola that is covered under the copyright the next type of ipr which is eligible is called as trade dress or design patent so basically the shape of this particular bottle you can see that it is different in nature there are small bubble bubbles at the bottom of this or the portion of this which is curved in nature you will see that why this is curved in nature and has a bottle in that because it helps you to grip the bottle in a proper manner this is all categorized under the design patent right a shape of this particular bottle which is distinguishable from any other bottle for example bislery or kinley or for example aquafina if you keep this bottle on a side of this particular coca cola bottle you will be easily able to differentiate that this bottle that is a coca cola bottle is different than the bottle which is visible in the uh, other frame of the picture that is kinley or bisley or etc this is the importance of uh, you know the trade dress or design of this design patent of this particular bottle trade secret this we discussed couple of times now trade secret basically is about a secret for uh, the ingredients of this particular liquid just imagine uh, the same example i'm repeating just imagine if the uh, if the ingredients or the percentage of the ingredients of this particular bottle or the liquid is disclosed to a competitor in the market do you really feel that the competitor would be so uh, generous to not use that ingredient and come up with a, with his product and ultimately what will happen is like eventually coca cola will lose its business in the market as the similar test would be available to the competitor as well and thus it will hamper the business of coca cola here uh, i think uh, we'll be soon closing this session uh, in next couple of minutes maybe 15 20 minutes but uh, all the points that we discussed in this session today uh, needs to be understood from a perspective that why ipr is required what is the importance of ipr in our life 
and what are the advantages of IPR in our life. You can see a very good uh, illustration here which I would try to show. Firstly, a person on the left hand side on the top, he identifies that there was some problem in the existing market, existing product. This is more you know specific from a patent perspective but all other type of IPRs can also be compared with this kind of example only. So in order to solve this problem, this person came up, came up with a new idea. He realized that this idea is associated with the technology and he has to actually show it from a technical perspective how the idea works. That's why what he did is like on the third uh, circle, he, see, he, he worked on the idea he did an experiment and realized that yes, it is actually solving a problem. What he did was like he tried to file a copyright, he, he tried to file an intellectual property right. Intellectual property right in this particular case can be of different types. One is of a patent, second is of a copyright, third is of a trademark, it can be a design, anything. He just filed a IPR for it. Okay. So you may have noted that he filed an IPR that means obviously it cannot be any random person to whom or it cannot be a shop at which you go and file a, file a IPR. This IPR has to be filed at a dedicated office which is authorized by the government of India and then only then it is considered as an IPR or you know any specific type of IPR filed at a particular patent or trademark or design or you know any other registry or office. So after filing the advantages of IPR start. First is most important type of advantage is that this person who has filed an IPR for his product or for his invention or for his company, he would be legally allowed to stop anybody, any person who is copying or using his invention or his IPR without his knowledge, without his permission or without uh, you know, uh, taking a due acknowledgement from him to use that. Indirectly, whenever a person in the market tries to copy and hamper the reputation as well as the business in terms of revenue of a particular company, this company whose IPR is being copied can take a legal action against this particular culprit or copier or in other in legal term it is called as infringer. Now, most important point that needs to be understood here is that there is no other documentation that helps you to legally stop anybody from copying your product or copying your IPR. At the initiation of this particular session, I told you that I gave a very simple example of a, of a car wherein a car bought by your hard earned money, somebody comes and just says that this is not your car, this is my car. You show him the documentation that is the RC book or the uh, you know receipt of purchase from a showroom and suggest or indicate that this particular car belongs to me but as I told you IPR anything that has come to a human mind that cannot be given a certificate or a receipt and thus filing an intellectual property right is only the particular protection that you can get because it gives you an official government receipt with a government stamp on it indicating that this idea or this particular IPR was brought by this particular person on this, this state and that is the reason I stress that the most important type of advantage that you would get uh, in filing of the IPR is that you can legally stop anybody from using, selling, manufacturing, importing for that matter exporting right and you know most importantly even as an end user usage is also or can be prohibited by uh, the IPR rights that are being given to you. What are the other complementary advantages that you get? One of these particular advantages is that it, it fosters your uh, you know innovative spirit. So there are many ideas or many things that come into human mind but if, if it is not properly channelized, uh, what is the use of such ideas? You just keep on disclosing it in a newspaper and it will be of no use because it will not give you any personal or monopoly based revenue benefits out of it. Thus, Filing an IPR and exercising your rights or exercising or enjoying your rights will give you a further, you know, positive motivation to innovate, right? Second important type of advantage is that it actually, whenever it's in research and development, every company or every individual thinks of growing in terms of coming up with an innovative concept. The world is competitive in nature. So just imagine if 
if there are no no companies like microsoft and apple and samsung do you really feel there will be anybody who will be doing innovation in those particular area of technology right so these companies keep on trying to come up with new concepts new ideas in the market and they keep on developing it in their products so this filing of ipr not only gives them a protection but it also helps to motivate the people in r&d to come up with a better suggestions better proposals better type of iprs which were existing till date or existing yesterday right this is the second important advantage of this part another type of advantage is that it reduces the time gap between the lab and the market what does it mean it is that you keep on researching in a lab but you are scared of bringing your product in the market so what will happen eventually is like you will keep on delaying your product in the market with a fear that somebody uh, will try to copy it and may hamper your business and thus you try to delay your product launch in the market ultimately what is going to happen is like firstly it is going to hamper your own revenue your own business and second is that you will not be you know you will be away from the market and you will not be able to understand what is the potential of your product in the market even though there may be a requirement of it right thus when you file an ipr be it patent trademark copyright this ipr gives you a protection that even if somebody tries to steal your idea you would be legally allowed to stop them from copying your particular concept or stopping them from using it without your permission thus it also indirectly helps to reduce a gap between the lab and the market just researching and not developing or just developing and not selling it in the market are of no use in today's industry you have to keep on researching you have to keep on developing on that research and you have to keep on selling or bringing those developments in the market today otherwise it is of no use to keep it just in house right it will not give or it will not help you to generate any kind of revenue now uh, another important aspect of this is like it brings the urgency to r&d efforts that means here the urgency means is that uh, ipr or the government comes to know that what is happening in the r&d industry and they may as and when required use this particular ipr for the benefit of the government after deciding a particular benefits for a, a researcher common concerns of scientists what are the common concerns of scientists is that if i disclose my idea to somebody in the form of i triple research paper or in the form of a journal or a thesis somebody will copy it and i may not be able to claim the benefit out of it right this is a very common concern of any scientist not only of scientists but any person who is who is having an innovative mind right so what is the advantage of ipr for this is that it gives you legal protection it gives you documentation receipt that this particular concept or this particular idea was filed by this person and if anybody from after this date tries to copy or steal his particular concept he or the person can legally stop this copier from using selling manufacturing buying and other you know stuff in that right involvement of top management in protection so here the top management means the government or the legally enforceable authorities in any particular jurisdiction so here indirectly you are involving or you are making them a party that boss we have filed a patent application or we have filed an ipr in your uh, authority so we need some protection from your side and thus by law these top management or the government is also bound to follow the rules and regulations to ensure that a proper security to your ipr is given by this particular authority incentives to the scientist obviously if your innovation or if your research is being appreciated by the people in market and or you realize that your management gives you importance uh, for your research obviously you be, your mind would be further sharpened to make further innovations in the industry and thus this is the slide which indicates what would be the importance of ipr for a people or for a individual or for a corporate company be it small scale or large scale industry what is the importance of ipr for them right moving on to the next slide the reasons to protect the intellectual property indirectly we have already discussed this particular uh, uh, points but still to just ensure that we are on the same page let us discuss each of these particular thing 
we discussed that what is the importance of uh, IPR. We discussed why IPR is required. Here are the specific points that will help you to understand the reasons for protecting your intellectual property. One is most important on the left hand side. It stops other from copying your idea. Obviously, that is the whole and sole purpose of filing the intellectual property right. It will stop your competitor from copying your IPR or your idea to generate easy money. Right? It will stop. And even if he wants to use it, he should come to you and he should take a permission from you to use it. So this permission can be given by, uh, you know, by either agreeing on certain terms and conditions or from generating some royalty based money out of it. Right. Second most important part of this particular reasons for protecting your IPR is that it will help to enhance the market value of your idea or business. Like I told you, if you don't file a patent, if you don't file an IPR on your products and you sell, start selling it in the market, anybody, any competitor can just come use it and without your permission and still you, he can also sell it in the market while your product is already in the market. What will happen ultimately is like if there will be 10 customers for your product, it will be diverted or it will be distributed into either equal or you will not get even a single benefit out of it. The best example of this is like what China industry is doing at the moment is like the products that we invest time, effort and money in India or in any other country rather, they just come up with, they just try to copy it and they just come up with any XYZ product with a very com comparably very cheaper price and they start selling it in the Indian market as well. What will happen ultimately? Ultimately what will happen is like people in India or any country are more inclined towards the cost first and then towards the quality second. People who will purchase the Chinese product for 10 rupees, people, those people will never purchase your product even though you give them a uh, warranty or guarantee of 10 years as compared to the Chinese product for 100 rupees. They will never buy that. Thus, filing an intellectual property will enhance the market value of your idea or business. Indirectly, you are legally giving them directions that boss, if you'll copy, I'm going to sue you, I'm going to take you in court and I'm going to claim the damages for it. Thus, IPR is really required for it. Third and most important is like it is it converts your idea into a profit making asset. Just imagine if if you if your mind is very innovative in nature and everything is happening inside your mind, but nothing is coming out as a product. Everything is in your mind. You know that I can like, let's take a real time example. Your mind comes up with a very good solution to solve this COVID crisis, but you you do not do any kind of precautionary measures to to build. A product out of it so that people would be benefited with much more lesser price. You will not do anything like that. What will be a use of that idea? So unless and otherwise you convert your idea into an asset or a product, it will be of no use. And such product with the fear of being copied or being used without your permission, IPR helps you to do that. IPR is a backup plan or is a supporting kind of path for your asset which you come up with as a product. It enhances the competitiveness in the market. The best example of this is like, just imagine every day there is something happening. Tesla is coming up with some other inventions. Google is coming with some other inventions. These are all competitor companies in nature. So what happens like they will realize that if a company, competitor company has come up with one idea, I should come up with another idea which would be superior or better as compared to that particular idea. And thus indirectly IP or intellectual property, it enhances the competitiveness, let us say a positive competitiveness in the market. Obviously, each competitiveness has a uh, dual side that is a negative impact as well. But at the moment, we are thinking only of the positive thing that they'll keep on innovating something. It enhances the export opportunities for a business. So imagine, uh, let's take again the same example of COVID. Just imagine you filed a uh, vaccine, uh, you filed a patent for a vaccine which helps to solve the COVID in 10 days. Don't you think that all the com all the countries across the globe would come to India for uh, asking to have a collaboration to give them the product and then ultimately the export opportunities for the country as well as your profit for a business would increase? Obviously, yes. So these are few of the reasons why we should protect an intellectual property right or in other words, why we should suggest people who are into innovating or coming up with a new product or process to file an intellectual property right. To uh, just wrap this session uh, with a very good example which was ancestrally known to all but not known in terms of or in perspective of IPR. We all know Taj Mahal. It was built by the uh, you know the workers 
and till date there is no such sculpture that is available across the globe and nobody is aware how this particular sculpture was built in what aspect or in what parameters what mr shah jahan the great leader what he tried to do is like after after he built this after the completion of the building of this taj mahal he ordered to cut hands of all the workers who were involved in the uh, the sculpture building you know why the simple answer is that so that they they should not come up or they should not build another such wondrous you know sculpture to avoid such circumstances to avoid such incidents he try he actually cut off the hands one of the reasons why i put this example is there because during the age of shah jahan there was no ipr in picture if shah jahan would have taken a patent or trademark or copyright on these particular sculptures he he would have not had to cut the hands of the worker he would have just kept the rights with him and he would have actually stopped anybody legally from doing that but unfortunately there was no such ipr existence in the age of mr shah jahan so he has to take such cruel uh, path to protect his interest in the sculpture right having said that to wrap up today's session i would like to quickly revise uh, what are the different and important types of ipr that we just saw and what are the specific important features that we wanted to keep in mind when we go for the next session first row indicates that who can file the protection of ipr for different types for example patents trademark copyright and design are the most important type of ipr which are specifically used in india as well as which is required for a person who comes up with a product who seeks the right inventors for the patents yes inventors because they are innovative in nature trademark that is owner of the goods and services copyright is being protected by the author of the work and design is being protected by the designer or the inventor so ultimately these are all human beings but they work in a different intention they work in a different mode that is the reason they are separated as a inventor owner of the good author of the work and designer what does it protect like i said invention is all associated with the technology so it can protect product as well as process whereas trademark is always associated with the name or the logo of the product brand and thus any name logo word slogan color smell anything can be protected under trademark copyright we discussed any artistic literary or dramatic work cinematographic work can be protected under copyright design like we discussed any external appearance of a product which is appealing to a human eye and which helps a product to be distinguished from other is protected under design registration is required or not absolutely for patents absolute registration is required otherwise your invention would be in vain right most importantly for trademark registration is compulsory but india has uh, a kind of leverage wherein a, a trademark can be started to use before even filing a trademark and you can use a prior claiming that means for example if somebody is using it 5 years back today if you file a application you can still claim the rights of the mark being used 5 years before that particular registration copyright it is not mandatory because as soon as the work is created the copyright of that particular subject matter starts but it is recommended why because at the end of the uh, stage everything is associated with a law so law will ask you what is the proof that this particular copyright you are the originator worker originator of this particular work so a date is really important and that date is only uh, useful when it is given or granted by a government authority and thus even though a copyright filing is not really required not really mandatory but this will help uh, to generate a kind of receipt from the government which will show that this was your first creation for designs registration is really mandatory because uh, as soon as the product is being launched uh, they will uh, try to copy it and thus having a protection similar to uh, utility patent design patent is also important duration like we discussed patent is actually applicable for 20 years from the date of filing trademark its protection is for 10 years and it can be further renewed for next three consecutive times that means total 30 years you can consider copyright the longest type of protection that you get protection is for the life of the author plus 60 years from the death of the author and then design the protection is for 10 years which can be renewed for further 5 years so total 15 years of time so this was today's session and uh, thank you very much for uh, being patient uh, during the uh, session and i would really appreciate your feedback on the same 
and we'll be meeting again for the next session which will be scheduled uh, tomorrow and i would like to just quickly browse again through what we are going to discuss tomorrow so tomorrow we are going to go into details of patents specifically we are going to see what are the requirements of patent filing before that we are going to discuss about the filing procedures or how a patent or other type of ipr are filed and what is the life cycle of this particular uh, you know iprs in the patent office or trademark office right